Excuses make you feel good about doing nothing and staying right where you are. I could have used the excuse that I wasn't an athlete or that I was too big or too old or too busy. Excuses are the enemy of your dreams, your goals, your purpose. I am the Sharonda. 2017 Rock and Roll Marathon Series Hall of Fame inductee. I am the Sharonda. Um, my driver's license says Sharonda McMullen, but I chose uh, to go by I am the Sharonda because I uh, found that I was on a, on a journey of self-awareness and it really kind of all started with the question of who are you? Somebody actually asked that question, who are you? And not to say, uh, you know, most people answer the question, uh, you know, I'm a teacher, I'm a doctor, I'm this, I'm that. But that's not really who you are, that's what you do. So I set off on a journey one day to figure out, who am I? And uh, I just really thought about it and, and figured that I am this, this being, this um, energy that is encased in this body that people know as Sharonda and I am the only Sharonda that is uh, encasing this particular energy and this particular um, um, uh, spirit if you will so I call myself I am the Sharonda and it's not to to be high-minded or to, to think that, that I am the only, like I'm the best or I'm the most wonderful or anything like that. But I am the only me. So I am the Sharonda. Uh, as a result of that, it really kind of opened my eyes to life and uh, being more aware of what's going on, what's going on around me, what's going on with me, uh, what's going on in me, and how I affect the world. So uh, with that, it just seemed like people began to, to be drawn to me and, and ask me questions about um, how they can achieve their greatness and how they can move forward in the stuff that they want to do. So uh, I began to to uh, help folks and be like a coach, if you will. Uh, I speak to groups, I speak to people, coach folks along and motivate people. So I'm really um, satisfied with myself. You have to do stuff that makes that satisfies you. You have to do what makes you happy and makes your vibration just right. And what what satisfies me is to motivate other people. So um, that's what I would do. Anytime you see anything from me on like Instagram, especially I really like Instagram and uh, Facebook or or you talk to me, I'm I'm trying to help you be all that you want to be, which is um, how I came across or how I came to my organization, which is create a new you. So if you don't like the life that you have, if you don't like where you are, uh, you can create a new life. You can create a new being. You can you can do whatever it is that you want to do. You just have to want to do it. You can be whoever you want to be. You just have to want to be it. So, I am in St. Louis, Missouri, the show me state. And a lot of folks are like, well, yeah, I know it can be done, but I need to see it first. Okay. Well, I am 43 years old. I am obviously a black woman. I, I am a, a thicker, curvier black woman. I am not a skinny mini person. And I put it to the test. I put it out there as in, if you want to do it, you can do it. Which is how um, I came to really being immersed in, in this running. Now it all started because I was trying to control my weight and I hired a trainer to help me control my weight. So um, I, I, I had a personal trainer so I met with this person one time a week. Well, 
I know me and I knew that I needed something to hold me accountable to actually doing the workout plan and and sticking with it for the rest of the week because I only met with him once a week uh, so I was going along and and I was at the store where I bought where I bought my workout apparel and I heard about this 5k race so I was like hmm that could be kind of fun so I signed up for the race because I knew that since I didn't want to pass out during after whenever with the race that I needed to work out so I did I trained for it I ran the race I did very well at least it was very well to me because again remember I'm in my 40s and and I'm not a little girl and you know okay so I do the race and at the end of it they handed me a medal and I was like what's this where did this come from? What do you mean? And, and and I was like really excited about this medal. And so then I started wondering, do y'all do this for other races? Are there other races where I could get a medal? And there were. There are other races where they had medals. So I signed up for them and kept signing up for them. And I did them and did them and got more and more medals. And I was really excited because I was getting these little um, showmanships of, 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 of achievement okay these tokens of achievement so that year came to an end and the next year was coming up I was looking for races to run and I came across the rock and roll marathon series and they had a whole bunch of really nice medals and in addition to the medals that you would earn for actually running the race they had medals for um, incentive medals so if you do more than one race in a weekend you get an additional medal um, and then they had a a goal of Hall of Fame so you could reach the Hall of Fame if you did uh, 15 races now remember I'm doing 5k's and I'm like hey I could do this because I did like 16, 16 of them the, the last year so I was good but then I found out that they had to be either uh, half marathons or marathons I'm like mm. well I do like the medals <laughs> and it would be quite an achievement to to make it to the Hall of Fame and it was a, a journey to get to I am the Sharonda and it, it started a long time ago it started around 2010 maybe 2011 or so um, I was very very unhappy with my life extremely unhappy with my life. I was in a marriage that was failing. I was grossly overweight. I had a business that wasn't doing well. I was broke and I was very unhappy with where I was. But I was going to church every Sunday. I was going to church every Sunday. I was giving an offering. offering. I was giving a tithe. And we were taught that if you tithe, that's going to rebuke the devourer, so I shouldn't be broke. I was taught that if I uh, gave my reasonable service to the church, then God was going to do these other things for me. So I take care of God, God's going to take care of me. That's what I was taught. So I was down with God, I but in church my Sunday. life was so uncomfortable and it was so awful to me. All right. So I had a heart to heart with God and it is, it's very unorthodox. Um, I, I know a lot of y'all are going to be like, what, how dare you? But I went on this walk because that's when I do my prayer test, when I have my prayer time, when I'm out walking and I got on this walk and I was like, God, you're going to have to tell me something. You're going to have to tell me something because how am I going to be down with you, but you don't seem to be down with me. Uh, my life is really bad. My life is, is turned upside down. I'm not comfortable. I don't have any money. Not that I didn't have the money that I wanted. I didn't have any money. Okay. Uh, I had I had a business that was up, then mostly down. The the marriage was on the rocks, and and I'm like, what what do you want? Where are you? What's going on? Who are you? Why are you? What 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 the what? Didn't get an answer. <laughs> there was no reply. So I said, okay, fine, I'm going to go talk to some people. So I went to talk with people 
who were living the life that I wanted to live. And I, I didn't know these people. I talked to all kinds of folks, different religions, different ethnicities, di different races, different uh, genders. I spoke to a lot of people and I asked them, I said, so what's your, what's your spiritual take on this? What's, what's, your, what's your belief spiritually? And each of them said something very similar, even though they were different religions. Each person said basically that they believed in a higher power. Some called it God, some was Allah, some was the universe, some was Mother Earth, but they believed in this higher power. And they believed that this higher power gave them the ability to make moves. They felt like they were to move the way they were led to move, but they looked to this higher power when they didn't exactly know what to do. So they did not say, okay, I want to, um, I, I want this, these keys. I want these keys in my hand. They didn't sit back and say, I want these keys in my hand and then wait for the keys to jump in their hand. They didn't do that. What they did was they said, I want the keys to be in my hand, so how can I make that happen? And then they would, they would trust that the higher power would give them the power and the ability to carry out those plans. I said, okay, so I've been looking at this thing all wrong. I have been not looking at what's already put inside of me. So I, I went back, had another talk with God, had to apologize for going off. And then I said, okay, I'm, I'm getting a better understanding of how we're supposed to work together. How we're supposed to, how, how you're supposed to enable me in, for lack of better words, okay? So um, God created each of us individually for a purpose unique to each individual perfect person. And you can look at it, at least I do, as a big old puzzle. And each piece of the puzzle represents a different person. The, pu the puzzle represents life in general. And then uh, each piece is, is, is a person. So each puzzle piece is different from any other puzzle piece. And it's not going to fit anywhere but where it fits. And God has created this whole life situation and has thought about each individual person in a way unique to them. This is a picture that I saw and it's art, but when I saw it, it looked like gears. And I know it's not gears, but it looked like gears. And it spoke to me because the way gears work is that one gear turns the next gear that turns the next gear that turns the next gear. And as it is with people, it's very important that people, that we, each of us do what we are purposed in this life to do. Because it's not just about the individual. It's not just about me. It's not just about you. It's about everybody. Because one person can affect so many different people. If this gear right here doesn't move, then this one doesn't move. If that one doesn't move, that one doesn't move. If this one doesn't move, then this one doesn't go around. And this one up here is so much bigger than this little bitty one right here. But when people say, I'm just so-and-so, I'm little old whatever, and I don't mean anything, you do mean something. Because this little bitty gear right here, if it doesn't move, it's going to affect this very big one up here. So it's very important that we do what we are supposed to do whatever that is whatever purpose in life it is it's very important that in life we carry out our particular part of the plan so it's very important just like we were talking about the gears it's very important that you do your part but you have to do it you can't just sit back and say, oh, I'm supposed to be 
um, a grade A well sought after dog groomer and then not seek the information on how to be a dog groomer. You have to seek the information to be a dog groomer, do whatever it is that you do, uh, practice, uh, I don't know, but you have to do whatever that is in order to be a, 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 a grade A dog groomer. And then the universe will conspire. God will conspire to move people into your way, into your place, into your path. That are gonna blow you up, so to speak. So you look at folks and say, "I knew them when they were in high school. We went to high school together. Now they are winning Grammys and stuff." And you think about, well, they don't have any more talent than the next person. Maybe, maybe not. But the deal is, they did all that they could do within their purpose. And then the universe conspired to take over and do the rest. We could be so much more if we would do everything that we're supposed to do. Like say for instance, this is the level at which God is going to take over. But we operating down here. And if you never get, if you're doing this, and you never get here, then you'll never really see how big you could ever really be or how much you could ever really have. You have to give 100% of your effort and then God will blast you off on the rest. So that is what I learned. That's how I operate. As far as these runs are concerned, with the, the Hall of Fame, uh, you know, to be honest with you, when I when I started the journey, I didn't know. I didn't know all that it was going to take. I was setting out to do 15 half marathons so I could get to the Hall of Fame. I didn't really understand all of the travel that was going to be involved, all of the training that was going to be involved, all of the dedication to eating right. Not just not overeating, because that's overeating, because that's, that's my challenge, overeating, because I love food. But to not just overeat, but to eat the right stuff that's going to fuel my run. I had to be concerned with all of that. It was a, it was a new era. It was a new realm for me. Each trip had a different issue. And my, my very first one, it was in New Orleans. And it was a wonderful city, and the people of New Orleans were great, but I was not adequately prepared for the race because I had been sick, so I hadn't been training like I really should have. And I said, well, I'm doing this because I got this goal. <laughs> and, and I showed up, and I was like, hey, if you can run one mile, you can run 100. That was my mindset. That is not true. <laughs> that is not true. So I went to do these 13 miles and about in mile six, I hit a wall. And, and I was just, it felt like the muscles in my legs were coming apart, it was coming away from the bones in my legs. It was a horrible, horrible feeling. But I persevered and there were little angels along the way who were like, hey honey, what's your name? My name is Sharonda. Oh, Sharonda, you can do this. You can make it. Just keep going, honey. You just have, you're almost there. You're halfway done anyway. Just keep going. And I was like, thank you, Lord, for the angels. When it was all over, I was like, who are these people? <laughs> How did this even happen? But kept going. And, and then the next one, I was in, uh, in Washington, D.C. I, I didn't know, but the place where I was staying was in the straight up hood. And I, I, you know, I felt like, hey, I'm from St. Louis. I'm good. Not, no. So, <laughs> so each each race had had a whole um, issue within itself. Not necessarily bad issues, but things that I just was not prepared for. That I I didn't really understand. And and as things would come up, I would think about the quote from Martin Luther King that says, "You don't need to see the whole staircase. Just the first step. Just the first step." So, okay. Well, the next step is to hit run number three, and and that's what we did. So then I um, I ran into a guy 
who who said that he was running a, a 5k and a half marathon that weekend I knew that the half marathon and the 5k were taking place at the same time so I'm like how in the world is he doing this so this is somebody I didn't even know so I butted into his conversation I said hey excuse me <laughs> and, and I asked him I said well how, how are you gonna do that he said easy he said he was going to uh, start the 5k he was going to finish that in about 20 minutes he was going to um, go back over to the start line and start the half marathon and I said you can do that he said yeah you can do that I said your body can do that he said yeah because then he broke it down and he said well the 5k is three miles and the half marathon is 13 miles that's only 16 miles I said okay he said the full marathon is 20, 20, um, 20, 26. And I said, yeah. So there are people out there doing the full marathon. I was like, well, yeah, 26 and 16. Okay, so, all right. So that started the whole thing of Sharonda's going to do more than one race in a weekend. So I never did more than one in a day like he did. But I would do one on Saturday and then turn right around and do one on Sunday. Sometimes I do two on Saturday, do the next one on Sunday. As things went along, I learned about how to properly fuel your body. I, I learned hydration is so important. I learned rest is so important. And I learned that pasta is not bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, that's my favorite. And uh, having a nice pasta dinner the night before. But I learned so much, met so many wonderful people, and it has been a truly, truly, truly a journey. I never expected any of this stuff to happen. I just wanted to go to the Hall of Fame and be motivation for somebody. And I learned that I was motivation for myself because a lot of this stuff that came up, I didn't expect it. Would not have thought that I could have handled it, but it all worked out. It worked out that whole step-by-step -step thing when I first started I just looked to the next step actually as the whole thing was going on, I looked to the next step and I looked up and, and counted up my races I said I need these 15 which cities am I gonna go to and and I said oh no I got to go out of the country I don't have credentials to go out of the country I need a passport so I had to get that in order. Thankfully, I figured that went out ahead enough in enough time that I was able to just um, submit a general uh, application or a regular application, and I did not have to have it expedited. But now that you know this process, I have a passport and I get to travel different places outside of the country. I mean, this whole thing has been like truly, truly wonderful and marvelous and, and just a learning experience all the way around. So, the, uh, I was able to do, one of the 15 cities was uh, St. Louis, my hometown. I was so excited to be in St. Louis. The year before, I was doing all these 5Ks, and I really had gotten pretty spoiled in that I lived downtown. Most of all the races I did were downtown. I would literally go downstairs, walk out of my building, over to the start line, and start the race. That's literally what I would do. And then, you know, participate in whatever post, uh, post race activities and then walk back home. That's what I would do. But with these trips, I mean, with these other runs that I was doing, I had to get on the airplane. I had to get in my car. I had to, you know, do all this stuff. I had to go to the city. I had hotels. I had, to, I had overnight stays, all this other stuff. It became so much more involved. I, I didn't count up all of that before. <laughs> Before I set the goal, I just set the goal. It was just a simple, genuine goal that that's the way it started out. But uh, I want to say it was like 
run number 11 i think it was which was st louis i was so happy to be in st louis not just because it was my hometown but because i didn't have to go anywhere i could i could go and i did i went downstairs <laughs> out my door walked to the start line did the race and came back home i was like oh this is just like old times mm -hmm. <laughs> it was so wonderful it was so it was so easy and it was wonderful to be in a place where I knew where I was. <laughs> these other these other races in these other cities is 13 miles. So you see a good part of the city in 13 miles. And um, this time I actually saw places and neighborhoods that I knew. It was it was real nice. It was real nice and nostalgic like. found that I was on a, on a journey of self-awareness and it really kind of all started with the question of who are you?
I am who I am. I am not a likely candidate to even do any of this. So this will really be a testament to what my message is. Create a new you. If you don't like the way it is, you can change it. So what better way to be an example in the show me state than to be this unlikely person, older person. I'm not old. I'm just saying I'm not 20 something. <laughs> and and do and make this achievement. So I set out to do it. And I had only done the 5Ks before, but I said, okay, my goal is to do 15 half marathons so I can make it to the Hall of Fame. When I set that goal, that's all I was intending on doing, was doing the 15 half marathons and, and making it to the Hall of Fame. But as I got going, I saw they had 5Ks, they had one milers, they had 10Ks. And, and I figured, well, if I'm there, I might as well do them all. I uh, started doing those races and keep in mind, you know, we're talking about 15 races and they're not 15 races in St. Louis, it's all over the world. So they have 26 different um, cities that they visit and that they host these races in all over the world throughout the year. So not only was I 40, oh, not only was I older, not only was I curvy, not only was you know this, that, and the other, now I had to start traveling. Um, I had not traveled before, but I had to figure it out. So uh, at the end of the day, it worked out. It, it, it simply worked out. I put the pedal to the metal with uh, my income, with you know maintaining my outgo maintaining my spending uh increasing my income and and getting those travel dates done getting those travel trips rather done and i'll say it has been a wonderful glorious trip this particular i mean this year i've met so many wonderful people and i've learned so much not only about the sport of running but about myself as well uh, so i at the end of it all it was 28 races 50 medals uh 230 miles that i ran i visited um 15 cities i've been to two countries and this has been absolutely wonderful and i am saying as an unlikely candidate to do any of this running that if you want to do anything and it doesn't have to just be running it can be whatever is in your mind whatever is in your heart if there's anything that you want to do and you feel it passionately you can do it you just have to want it so believe it then achieve it period Your goals, your purpose. No more excuses.
Jesus. I am the Sharonda. 2017 Rock and Roll Marathon Series Hall of Fame inducted. Hi guys, welcome back. This is Erica and Brooks. I hope that you all were empowered and enlightened by Mrs. Sharonda McMullen's journey. Uh, and uh, one thing I want to tell you is that it was empowering to me because just to be able to hear her story, it, it, it just enlightened me again and, and refreshed me about some things that I've done in my past as an athlete as well as a coach. I was, we both were uh, our alumni of the, of the University of Missouri Columbia, and I was on the track team there, and also a record holder in the discus. And uh, like I say, to be able to pursue your journey, it's an awesome thing. And like I say, in, in her in her documentary, my whole purpose was to capture how her journey was an innocent success. And what I mean by in, in, innocent success, I mean that. Basically, she pursued a journey that she didn't have a full vision for, but she knew exactly what she wanted to do in, in so many ways. She wanted to uh, become a Hall of Famer, and she did it. And so, uh, in, in the documentary, I wanted to show her short-term goals that she did uh, through her uh, journey with her, with her guide, uh, through her journey with talking to other people, finding out resources that were needed in order to accomplish her goal, and not just saying, I wish I could, but saying, I know I can, and I am going to be a Hall of Famer. And so uh, I want to thank Sharonda once again for sharing her story with us. Uh, I am the Sharonda, uh, <laughs> and then also she is a, an author. She has a book called No More Excuses. So you can look at her hashtag called No More Excuses and find out more about her own personal journey in her book. Uh, so uh, thank you once again for joining us with this journey with, the, with Sharonda McMullen. And uh, hope you all look forward to seeing the other uh, videos that I have coming your way. So stay tuned to those. This is Erica Brooks. Uh, with Business Plus Photography. I want to also thank Mr. Gabriel Cornelius for helping to videotape this part of our journey. So, hey, have a great day, and we look forward to seeing more of you as well as you seeing more of us. Business Plus Photography. Peace out.